You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the Scottish Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. It's only our two-man team this week. We're joined by Mark Wilson. We're, we're riding kind of low on the team this week, haven't we? Oh, well, the, to be fair, Shankers and only deserve to be dropped after recent performances. <laughs> um, so we're just the cream of the crop, always rises. So that's why it's just the two best ones on tonight. Yeah, definitely. That's it. That's the best team to have in this safer situation. But obviously, we've had a, another busy weekend of Scottish football. Wilson, before we go into the results, give us a give us a storyline of the weekend. What caught your eye? Um, the storyline of the weekend for me, possibly, um, apart from Kelly losing, which we'll go into later, um, was the extended contracts of Ralston and Taylor at Celtic, to be honest. Now, again, I appreciate Ralston's had a terrific start to the season. Um, touts obviously for the Scotland squad who were not exactly blessed with a lot of full back talent in, in the right side um, but again Ralston kinda, he's kind of flitted in and out of the team over several years a, a loan spell at St Johnson didn't work um, but as I say in terms of the start to this season then he's done very well Greg Taylor seems to be a bit of a kind of boo boy for the Celtic fans that he's not good enough and I've kind of said in the show before that if Celtic can stay in touch and distance, you know, 46 points um, by January, I do think Celtic will strengthen um, and the market. Um, I, do, I do think they'll do that. And any manager, not just Posh the call, anyone at Celtic must be looking at to strengthen the defence. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I would be amazed, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll eat my words if you like, I'll be amazed if Celtic win the league with Ralston and Taylor as their two first-choice fullbacks. Um, but as I say... Ralston, for me, this season has done well, so possibly deserving of an extended deal. But I don't quite know how this will sit with the Celtic fans. Um, I mean, Greg Taylor may just be understudy. I don't know. To Juranovic. But, as I say, that, that, that definitely caught my eye this week because I, I actually thought Celtic might be looking to bring in maybe a wee bit more experience and maybe a wee bit better players in January for those positions. I think Ralston's done pretty well, though, considering the he's been yeah. going in at the deep end, obviously, with... With no depth there, but Taylor's a Taylor's an odd one because you wouldn't you wouldn't say Taylor's he's stood out that sore thumb, but he's done well in times. As I you mean, say, I, I, I think he has, armor. and it's 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 I, I would call it Alex Ferguson syndrome. You know, no one was going to replace him at Manchester United, and the hearts and the eyes of the Celtic support. No one was going to replace Kieran Tierney. You know, for the player he was, what he did in the transfer fee he got, and um, so it was always going to be difficult. Whoever came in there, as I say, I do think. I mean, I think everyone last year. Obviously, got a bit of grief from the supporters, but from social media, again, it seemed to be tail that got it an awful lot. And I think Celtic think we only came for Lowly Kilmarnock, you know, we should be doing better. Um, but as I say, it was a surprise, especially when he's out injured as well. But I do think he will be the understudy um, yeah, so. in, in, in a couple of games, well, it's certainly the next part of the season, if they all remain fit. Yeah, definitely. Another thing I'd like to touch on, sorry, Scott, was just. Uh, Walter Smith's funeral, I wasn't on last week. Yeah, definitely. After after the passing, um, it's very, very sad. I mean, there's nothing else you really can say on the matter because everyone from, you know, a football around the world has obviously paid their respects and all that. And um, what, what a character. I mean, obviously I never knew him, but I always remember <clears throat> once we were asked to be runners for the SFA, the coaching badges, and... It was some some high end big figures in Scottish football were doing their badges like John Collins, Richard Goff, Mick Sue, Pat Lane, and, and Walter Smith and Archie Knox um, were the assessors. Right. Now we were running about, you know, eight, nine hours a day or whatever it was, and it was, it was hard going. But the two of them were, were absolutely brilliant with everybody, you know, just wee stories, wee bits of encouragement. Um, and I always remember Archie Knox having really good stories to tell. And see, he wouldn't sit with them at lunch. He would come and sit with the group of young boys that were helping out and all that. So, a couple of great gentlemen there. And it's, it's very, very sad that Walter's passed. But it's, it's it's a big loss for everyone at Rangers, but also in Scottish football as well. Yeah, as uh, obviously we spoke a lot last week about Walter and we get some kind of be- the best memories. Who was your favourite Walter Smith memory as a manager? Like, obviously, you've been... You've- <laughs> 
You've uh, watched Scottish football for a long, long time. There must be a memory that sticks out. I mean, I mean, there was loads. I mean, as as much as I was, I was devastated that they they won the league at Rugby Park in 2000, 2008. 2011, was it not? Two, it was 2011, as late as that. Um, I, I can ask, you kind of thought if anyone's kind of more deserving of it. I mean, I was very disappointed. I actually felt the Scotland job would have suited them um, to a T, and I felt he should have had longer at that. Um, but again, Rangers was his first love, and I yeah. think folk appreciated that at the time. Um, so you kind of felt a, a wee bit, he was kind of vindicated after leaving the Scotland job because he went back and brought success to Rangers. The, the, the only the only one I, I always think of, um, obviously the interview with Chet Young's incredible, um, but the one I always think of was, um, I think I, I think Ali McCoy tells the story. Um, I, I, th- I think it was a game against Italy at the San Siro. And I think Ali McCoy, Tommy Burns and Jim Stewart, the goalie coach, all went in a taxi or a van to the San Siro to set up training mm-hmm. with the balls and the bibs and the equipment and all that. And they get stuck in traffic or they get lost. Tommy Burns gave the wrong, whatever it was. And by the time they basically got there, um, all the players, Motor Smith, were going, what's happened here, ready to start training. And Alan McCoy's words along the lines where you should have seen his face. And I always think when you look at Walter Smith from the touchline, you think you could just imagine that face uh, yeah. of, of what he was saying to Definitely. Alan McCoy's Tommy Burns. But again, and I've, I've heard that obviously interviews with, with Walter Smith before, and he kind of indicated that he could never be angry with Alan McCoy's or Tommy Burns. No, you know, no. for the way they were, you know, that, that, that type of thing. So, a, a great man and, and a definitely a great loss to Rangers and, and Scottish football. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> can, they, can they echo more what you've said there? But we'll move into the action over the weekend. Obviously, the, the Premiership was in full flow. There was one uh, called off game, Hibs and Livingston, obviously, due to Hibs' COVID situation. But we'll start at Tannadice on Saturday. Hearts 5 and D United 2. An, eight, an attendance of 18,000 fans. They were in they got a very good game, one of the games of the season. Some game, some game to talk about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it, it was good. I, mean, I, saw, I caught the highlights. The boy Woodburn caught the eye again uh, from Liverpool. A couple of tasty goals. Um, again, I, I'll be honest, I, th- I honestly thought that would end in a draw. Dundee United run a wee, a wee decent run and Hearts were starting to get a wee bit sticky feet. Yeah. Um, and re- results wise, and I thought it was, a, it, was a, it was a, I wouldn't say the bubble burst, but it was, it was deflating slightly. Um, and I think at 3 2, you know, it was because Nicky Clark scored, make it 3 2. And I thought, oh, it could be interesting here. But the hearts kind of blew them away, you know, last 15, 20 minutes. Um, and it shows you, you know, again, I think, I think Rory and I spoke about the longevity of hearts over the season, being able to keep up a, a title race. And I know it's very, very early, but they don't seem to be slipping up. Too much, and there's a lot of guys, you know. When I was watching the game, where I don't know who the guy making enough is that scored the fifth goal. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Um, and and they seem to be churning out results. But against the old adage, you know, Tyne Castle a very difficult place to go for the away team, and there's that um, all those fans on top of you, etc. But maybe just Hearts are just pushing themselves into that that kind of top two. Shows as well yeah, they're doing it. Boyce, Boyce has been kind of no been playing the past few games. It shows you they can score without. They can get goals when he's not there because he's obviously started the season really well. But Woodburn with a double. Boy Cochran looks a good player as well. And Stephen King. Yeah, t- t- tidy finish, tidy yeah. finish for his goal, goal as well. They've got again, a lot of talent. Yeah, and, and a lot of young talent. Yeah. You know, it's, there's, there's not very many. I mean, you get Kingsley and obviously Craig Gordon that's been over the course before. Mm-hmm. And I always think a, a good team stems from that. See if you've got a good goal, a commanding goalkeeper. Um, I think it gives the back four confidence. I, mean, I know he lost a couple of goals, but Craig Gordon was highly exposed, especially for Nicky Clarts. Um, but again, it's, it's going well for Hearts. Um, and my boy Sindel, as you say, they're scoring a few goals. So fair, fair play to them. I still think the bubble will burst, don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> but um, for the current position, they've, they've done really well. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, John Suter has been called into the squad as well. Yeah. That's that's a good, a good kind of call. I think he's been deserving of it. I think his performances for Hearts, you know, um, I mean, I'm led to believe he's only in it because Hanley was um, yeah. injured. Um, but fair play to the boy, you know, I see he, he took a penalty last week. At, was it Aberdeen he took the penalty? Yeah. Um, and he's, he scored a couple other goals this season. So so fair play to him. I mean, I don't think he'll start for Scotland, but maybe just to let's, let's Steve, let Steve Clark get a good look at him and see if he's definitely one that we can play in the future. Yeah, but obviously Hearts, they, they went setting for a wee while until obviously Celtic's result today, but... We'll move into Aberdeen now, Model 2. We thought Aberdeen were going into a, 
a wee good run of form, but obviously Motherwell have kind of put a wee bit of a wind on that. A 2-0 win away from home, Van Veen with two goals. It was more of a, kind of a game of two halves, but it sounds all right. Aberdeen were excellent in the first half, but Motherwell came out second half and kind of took advantage of some defensive laps for, for Aberdeen. It was two good finishes um, from the big striker. It did really well. Again, actually, I know it's hard. Aberdeen have kind of, we thought they kind of turned a corner with recent results. But I actually felt it was more a game that Motherwell couldn't afford to lose. I'm mm-hmm. um, in the back of a 6 1 tanking from Rangers the previous week. You know, it just, I mean, it just shows you how you know, inconsistent the league is. Everyone can beat everybody else. Um, but again, I always think Aberdeen, I sometimes maybe think the crowds at Petodre, they're a bit on their case quite a lot. And they expect to be much, especially after the start they had to this season. And that doesn't do anything for selling more tickets for the next home game. You know, losing at home to Motherwell. Don't get me wrong, I had backed a draw. I had backed three draws in the SPL. That mm-hmm. Only one came up. Um, I, I just felt both teams might have been a bit cagey trying to sit in. And a draw wouldn't have been the worst result for both teams. To say, because Aberdeen have been on a, a decent run. Um, but fair, fair play to Motherwell. You know, I think that's what maybe annoys Graham Alexander. That's the inconsistency of Motherwell. I mean, they get taught. I mean, I know Rangers are one of the better ones, but they get absolutely battered last week. You know, there was nothing. I don't think Graham Alexander took me any positives. Uh, from that game against Rangers. Um, but again, he's maybe said that, you know, these are the points, um, you know, we need to get even away from home. I think he'd have taken a draw before the game, but fair play to get three points down the road. Do you worry about Aberdeen? I know they've, they've kind of res- resurged quite well in the past few weeks, but again, just defensive lapses and you don't want to, once you're in that run, you don't want to get back into the kind of, the way of losing games and, can I it's a it condemn the confidence and I think we saw that. I think it was just two two really bad mistakes that led to the goals. It was two good finishes to be fair, but you, I don't think if you are, you're Stephen Glass, you don't want to get back into that run of lo- uh, kind of losing games and going flat footed again. Well that's that that's the thing, and it's 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 what you say, what you do in the next game, how you respond. Now, I dare say if Aberdeen lose their next game after an international break, then then there could be an issue setting in. Um but after doing kind of well at Ibrox, winning a couple of games as well, you know, he might just see an off day. Again, I know they're not playing in Europe, but it might just be too many games, you know. Rangers, to a certain extent, have the squad that can go to maybe three games in a week. Celtic, to a lesser extent, they're bringing in maybe kind of untried on test, but they have the numbers. Don't know if Aberdeen have the numbers. And as I say, I actually think, <coughs> I think you know, when they signed Scott Brown, I don't think they expected Scott Brown to play every game. No, I thought they maybe would flip, flip him in, flip him out, do a wee bit more at the side of the pitch in terms of coaching. And I'm quite sure Scott wants to play every game. But I think with the kind of desperation of the start to the season, he's had to kind of come in and play most games. Um, but I, th- I think it's just a blip for Aberdeen. I, I think I think they'll be okay. I think I think they'll they'll, they'll bounce back. Muller were obviously in the top six, but how important is it for the likes of like Van Veen? Obviously, Tony Watts had a good start. It's important to get them firing if you want to stay there. Yeah. Now, and as I say, Motherwell's target at the start of the season is probably top six. Um, I don't I don't think they'd have set their targets any higher than that. Watt and Van Veen, you know, are, sco- are scoring goals. Tony Watt was kind of tied for the Scotland squad, but I don't I don't think that was necessarily a goal. Um, but that's 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 what these teams have to do. You know, all these teams are in the mix, you know, even you know, you could bracket Hibs all the way down to um, possibly, you know, Ross County Livingston are all in the same boat. As I say, it, it certainly helps if you have two guys that are scoring goals and kind of sharing the load, because I don't necessarily see that with the likes of Livingston, Ross County. So I think Mother will be okay. I, I, I think they'll be absolutely fine, and I think Aberdeen will be fine as well. For me, it'll be controversial, but I don't know if both of them will make the top six. Maybe one of the two make the top six. Mm, I probably fancy model more than Aberdeen. I know mm-hmm. Aberdeen will maybe kind of improve. Well, I'll get on, but we'll, we'll wait till Rory's back on. I'll take that bet with Rory. I'll take that finish top six. Aye. 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 They've, they've had a few decent results. Obviously, they draw at Ibrox and they've, they've kind of been getting... But again, as I, as I touched on it, I think that's what annoys the manager. Aye. They can yeah. go and then you just lose, you know, silly. I mean, as I said, they were absolutely trounced by Rangers. Um, last week and as I say that, that must be a bit so annoying you go on a wee run and then you just lose and lose emphatically but again he's shown that they've bounced back so mm-hmm. I think he would have taken two points from those two games a draw against Rangers a draw against Aberdeen but he's taken you know three so yeah. fair play yeah definitely but we'll move into the, the other game yesterday St Johnson now St Marin now nah, it's just, it just says it all really to be honest <laughs> uh, 
Obviously, well, as, as the viewers know, we do a wee predictor within ourselves and to the viewers, and I think three of us had that now. Now, I, I, I was, I ratting all, ratting all over it. And as I say, <clears throat> again, St. Martin had a week in a re- recent bit of good form, and then again, felt he pieces again. But it just maybe shows you how tight the league is. St. John's have had a sticky patch as well. They're struggling for yeah. goals, obviously. <clears throat> like, yeah. And as I say, I would, I would sent off as well. You would, you would worry for the next couple of games. Well, he should actually be sent off at Parkhead uh, in the game against Celtic as well. He had a, he had a shocker of a tackle on uh, Carter Vickers. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe the frustration of not scoring goals is maybe getting to him. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, would, I would say both of them will be destined for the for the bottom six at Mern St. John's. No, I don't think they have enough squad-wise. But again, it can change in January, certainly. Um, but again, I don't think they have that person like a Tony Watt, Van Venus, maybe going to score 10, 15 goals. Aye, I think that's it. I think Brophy, Brophy was a big miss. Bro, Brophy's on fire, as I Aye. say. I was, the, the goals he's been scoring are, you know, typical Eamon Brophy goals, you know, Aye. out your feet and hat, out your feet and hat. And he was so good at Kilmarnock at doing that. He was a huge part of the success there. Um, so I'm a wee bit disappointed to see him at Simmons doing that. <laughs> but no shockers over the result yesterday. No, absolutely not. As I said, it was, it was going to be nil nil or one each. I thought maybe a couple of penalties or something, but no, 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 nil all over it, as the experts on the SM media predictor said. Yeah, three out of four got it nil nil. I can't remember who it was that didn't get it nil nil, but that's. Oh, but oh, Rory, nah. he'd have went five each or something. <laughs> but we'll move into the games that took place today. Obviously, we kicked off with a lunchtime kickoff, then D2, Celtic 4. Kyogo and Jota with doubles for Celtic, Mullen and Ashcroft with the goals for Dundee. We saw on Thursday night, and this is what I've been keen to get your thoughts on for the past couple of weeks. There's two sides of Celtic. There's this side of attacking talent that are just pulverising teams. I like Kyogo and Jota look brilliant. But you've still got these wee defensive worries, haven't you? I think, first of all, we should touch on the behaviour of the supporters as well. I, I just, I, I, we go, and it, goes, it happens every year around this time with the poppies and all this kind of stuff. And I, I just, I, are they trying to deflect away from that with the tennis ball situation? And the, just one and of those things where you're probably just better just keeping your mission. exactly. It's, it's, see, to be honest, see when, it, see when they start now. I mean, I, I don't doubt at Celtic Park, the, the Green Brigade, if whatever that's they're called, generate that kind of atmosphere with their banners and that. But see when it comes to the offensive banners. You know, you can have a wee poke at your rivals, a wee bit of fun. Yeah. The offensive ones, again, the politicians and all that stuff involved. And wasting the game. And, and what, 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 I, I don't get what they're trying to prove. I mean, I know it was the balls in Celtic's court with the appointment of uh, Bernard Higgins and the tennis balls, but I'd be mortified if the players were having to deal with the situation. And the players are trying to get the game started. They've done their warm-up and they're spending a few minutes knocking tennis balls, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, off the pitch you know it's it's totally bizarre and as I say it's always heightened this time of the year with their, their stance on the poppies on the strips and their, whatever they're doing um, but it, it needs to stop especially in front of the, the, the sky cameras I mean people moan um, about the, you know this, the coverage of Scottish football and, and this is probably one of the reasons why because sky can't be seen to be you know not, not promoting it as such but showing this stuff around the world it's, it's, it's absolutely bizarre I hope that stops um, ASAP. But going to the game, I, th- I think that's what Celtic fans are going to get. You know, I think if you're both teams to score, Celtic win is going to be um, <laughs> on your cup in most weeks. As I say, frighteningly good going forward. And that's where I, and that's where I touched on at the start about the Ralph and Taylor ones. Now, I know the, the phrase Ange ball has come in and obviously it's working in an attacking sense. My worry is, and it's a wee bit, again, <laughs> we, we saw with Manchester United at the weekend, See, when you play that style of football, when you come up against a better team or a, a team on the same peg as you, you're going to get torn to bits. Mm-hmm. Now, it, again, if you're looking forward to uh, the old firm game in January, I mean, Rangers' strength is going forward as well. It could be five each, you know, with, 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 with the chances Aye, both created. Sides, both sides are showing a lot of weakness at the back it, as well. It, it, yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I know we'll touch on Rangers next. But, yeah, I don't think Joe Hart covered himself in glory yesterday. I'm a, I think he's done really well at Celtic. I don't think he's quite got the presence of a Foster or a Gordon, um, but he's, he's, he's done well since he came in. He has a step up on what was there last season. Though, like oh, this. again, ten steps up for what was there last yeah. season. Um, but again, just looked a wee bit shaky yesterday. But I sometimes think, especially as it's happened to Alan McGregor once this season, 
See, when you go long spells without touching the ball, I mean, I mm-hmm. think Celtic had like 83% possession or something yesterday, 24 shots, seven on target, whatever it was. And you're thinking, goalkeepers must have to concentrate. And I think a wee bit lapse in concentration. They try to play a wee bit, get a touch of the ball, you know, maybe take a wee bit of chances to be involved in the game. Um, but yeah, frighteningly good going forward. And it was the same against Ferenc Varos in Thursday night. Um, going forward, good, but very suspect at the back. But if that's the style of play, Celtic fans need to get used to that. And I'm quite sure if they win 4-2 every week, they'll be quite happy. If you are the Celtic board and you're getting offered Jota for 6.5 million, do you snap Benfica Sandro? Oh, oh I, I think so. And I, and I think it's one of them, like, the, the supporters are now kind of keen on it. The problem is, you know, can a Burnley or a Leeds, can they offer seven? Can they offer eight? Can they offer much more than, than that? I think Celtic, if they want to get the deal done, they've sort of, again, sometimes you think Jota's putting himself in the shop window. Mm-hmm. So he's not he's not necessarily committed um, to Celtic. He's, he's here on loan. And I always think if you're there on loan, you tend to do a wee bit better. And then once he signs his four-year deal, then the, the standard drops a wee bit. You're a wee bit more comfortable. You don't possibly try as hard. But he certainly, certainly looks a finder. I, yeah, I, I would think the Celtic board will be looking um, to sign him anytime soon. Do you see the do you see the improvement in Celtic? Do you think they can mount a challenge? I think it'll be a challenge. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a challenge. But again, it's I always see them conceding. Mm. It's just whether you know, and it just I, I mean, but you can go back to the old firm game. You know, the strikers are done off day, and as I say, I always think they'll concede. So if they don't score, obviously there's an issue because I, I do think they'll always concede. And I say I think it'll be a challenge. I don't think it'll be the distance that it was um, last year. I know we'll touch on uh, Rangers as well, but we, we can't back. Kent looked a, a, a um, sharp yesterday, etc. Coming back into it, and that's where I think Celtic do need to strengthen in January in that defensive area. Um, as I say, possibly, possibly another sub, kind of supporting midfield. Although Turnbulls looked good the last couple of games. Um, I don't think you can get through a full season. I know that's been no doubt yeah. to be torn. I don't think is the answer. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I agree. I agree. As I say, but I think. Yeah, you know, we'll go on behind the scenes, but I think that'll be that'll be the priority in January. And as I say, I think if they're in touching distance with January, then it, it, it'll be a wee bit more exciting. But again, I always think it goes flat if ever well if Celtic lose another old firm game. I mean, that'll be what two years since they've since they've beaten Rangers. That that that, that that's the big one for Celtic fans. And Rangers have shown, albeit without the crowd as such, um, Rangers can go to Parkhead and win. You know, I've, I've absolutely no doubts about that as well. So it, it's, it's, it's going to be closer. I don't think it'll be necessarily close. I don't think it's a helicopter Sunday scenario, but I think it'll be closer than, than what we think. Have you been in... I know at the start of the season, you touched in for a hash every bit, but he's certainly shown he's, he's got a lot. There's a lot there, isn't there? He's going to, yes. He's going to be a big player for them. Yeah, yes, there is. But there's a lot of nonsense there as well. You know, I, th- I think his theatrics uh, last week against Livingston, he won the penalty. Um, what was that penalty? Was it a year? Well, I think I think by the I, I think uh, by the letter of the law. I mean, I, I can have said. Oh, I mean, if these, if these things probably happen a hundred times in lower levels of football, um, but it's a, a clip round the ear. But by the letter of the law, which is a wee bit embarrassing, apparently, but it's his reaction. It's the reaction that does my head. And it was the same yesterday. It was he kind of ran into the Dundee defender, and then he was holding. He was he was holding his head, and I think he's maybe just getting a wee bit. A wee bit too involved in that that side of things where I'm just letting his football do the talking. Um, but he certainly looks a find. He certainly, he certainly looks a find. I just hope he can um if he can carry out, you know, that 20 plus goals for Celtic because that's what they've been crying out for. The thing is, well, obviously, they, we know that Posta Coglu has been in that market for Furahashi, and it seems he's going back in. There's a couple of players he's looked at. See the problem with that, and I'm not saying this will happen, but Kashinia did that. And I'm not saying it Andrew's like Kashinia, I'm not saying that at all. He's shown he is showing a lot, kind of more and more each week. But you run a risk of having players there that you then, if if anything was to go wrong, you would struggle to get rid of. If they, unless, if they don't, yeah. Oh no, yeah. I, I understand your point, but again, every signing's a gamble. Aye. You know, you can. Uh, when Celtic get David Turnbull, for example, from other world, Greg Taylor from Kilmarnock, you know, Celtic fans must be thinking, mate, I'm in it here. You know, but they've done that for years. They've kind of uh, handpicked the best from the kind of teams in and around them and the in the low and lower of the end of the division. But as I say, yeah, they've got Furahashi and he's 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 kind of hit the ground running, he's come in and done well. 
can other players do that? But as I say that, that that's for any team. You know, you could mm-hmm. you could sign. I mean, you could argue Cristiano Ronaldo. He's kind of hit the ground running. He's obviously a very good player. But then look at look at like Harry Maguire was a standout for Leicester. Mm-hmm. You know, look at my Manchester United the difference from England. So as, as I say, if, every player's a gamble. I think the worry for Celtic is could someone come in and pinch him? You know, could yeah. um, could they play? Could they play in the Premiership? Well, he certainly got the pace and the movement and things up front. It just looks complete, intelligence as well. Yeah, just could he complete physically up. down there? That that's that, that's possibly your issue. Um, so they need to be they need to be careful um, in in terms of that. But definitely Celtic. If if that's the market they're going in, it's obviously it's obviously worked in this first instance. But it's I mean they went to. Was it China and signed Dewey? And that, that certainly didn't work either. So yeah. every transfer is a gamble. Yeah, definitely. But he looks, he does look as if he's got the, the intelligence to be a, a kind of top player as well. But Celta, again, see if you take away that game against Livingston. Their form is really good. I think they've, I think they've only, that was only two points of drops since they lost to Leverkusen. So it shows you that they are getting getting forward. They are going in the right direction. Yeah, but that's, that's what comes back and bites you at the end of the season. You know, no. ho- ho- home draws against Livingston, losing to Livingston. You know, these these are the. I mean, if, Livingston's taking what four points from six. Celtic's taking one. Um, you know, and as I say, especially at home. Now again, all the kind of not excuses. All the things last year would have been there's no crowd in there, and the crowd's a twelfth man. Still a nil nil draw, and I think what would make it a lot worse is the fact that the penalty missed. They were handed it. And then Geo Marcus misses a chance straight after, which is probably easier on the penalty. Mm-hmm. So again, it's ifs and ifs and buts. But yeah, the, t- the title race will be closer. It will certainly be closer this year than previous. Yeah, the final game of the weekend in the Premiership took place at uh, Ibrox today. Rangers four, Ross County two. Rangers handing out their, their what seems to be common one goal head start, <laughs> and then they go on and they won. They won four two. Obviously, Aribo Ken Bakuna on an own goal. It's a big one for Rangers, but again, it's another thing of this def- these defensive lapses. They're going to come a cropper at some point if they keep doing that because you can't give away one goal starts and f- against good teams. Yeah, but Ross County are not a good team. Well, no, <laughs> they've, they've, done, they've done it against Motherwell, they've done it against the Yeah, Bayern. yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, and as I, as I say, that's that, that's what will probably um, be worrying Stephen Gerrard. As again, it's the same as Celtic. The front end of the pitch is absolutely fine. It's, it's, it's the back end of the pitch um, that's causing them the issues. Albeit it was two, two nice, neat finishes from Ross County, but the, the Rangers' goals were good as well. Kent's goals are beauty. Bacuna's goals are beauty as well. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I know it's early in the season, but Aribo, for me, every time I watch Aribo, I'm impressed. I, I think he's possibly one for player of the season so far. I mean, I, I know he doesn't score particularly that many goals, but I just think every time I watch Rangers, he seems to be involved in a lot as well. The return of Kent's obviously massive. That's like a new, a new signing um, as well. But again... <sighs> And it's the expectation, you know, Rangers should be comfortable at home to Ross County um, on, a, on, a, on a match day at, at home. But as I say, the worrying thing for Stephen Gerrard, again, you're looking at it, you think it's possibly not there, but <clears throat> you've got Conor Goldson, whose contract issue seems to be in the newspapers every day. Is he switching off? Is, is his head possibly been turned? Um, I wonder I wonder if, that, if that's an issue. Alan McGregor doesn't seem to be reaching the, the dizzy heights that he, that he has done. Um, this season from last, so yeah, but what are you, Stephen Gerrard? But again, I think when the one of the, the rivals play the game first, then there's a, there's, there's, there's a bit of a reaction. Now, the reaction can be adverse as well; it can be a, a nervous reaction. But I don't think they, I think things were pretty comfortable yesterday, especially second half. I think Ross County hardly touched the ball till they, till they scored. So um, a, a, com- a comfortable home one. Yeah, I know. And as you say there, obviously Ryan Kent's back in the, the squad. Looked really good on Thursday when he came on in a wee cameo. And then obviously Ryan Jack's back in. He's obviously got a wee while to go to get proper match fit, but a wee cameo today. They're two big players, obviously. The, we spoke a lot about the squad Rangers have and things like that, but if your players are fully fit and you're, you've got them at your disposal, it's a, it's a big, big plus to have them back. Yeah, it will be, as I say, but we had the discussion in Focal probably if you don't know the ins and outs of it, slaughter us. But on the chat when we spoke about, you know, um the possibility of Billy Gilmer going to Rangers on when we just chatting our WhatsApp the other night. And and I'm and we had agreed and disagreed on certain points, fair enough. But I'm looking at Ryan Jack. Is Ryan Jack going to play? Is 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 he going to oust 
Kamara or Davis uh, in that team. Now, I know there are certain games, and now Ryan Jack has ability as well. I'm not just saying he's a, a clogger, but there'll be certain games I think Ryan Jack will be used. You know, possibly away at Aberdeen, away at Wednesday night, away at Ross County, away at Wednesday night, whatever it is. Um, but I, I now possibly, when I see the way Rangers play, I don't know if Ryan Jack's going to be necessarily that starting number eight in there. It's a tough one because obviously you've got Davis there, Lundstrom's command, he's looked he's looked good. There's been but you've got like a rebo. It's hard to fit the ball in, and that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a big squad, and you hope you hope they're European games, you know, because it's then it's then easier for Stephen Aye. Gerrard to say, Oh, you're you you will play Thursday, don't worry, you know, and he can appease the guys champing his door. I think mm-hmm. Kent I think Kent will play. I think he'll 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 go straight on. Yeah, the front um, that, the front three was that, the front three was a big conversation during the week, and I did expect Morelos not to start. Not be, you can see what he does, and obviously he's been a bit bit short of a kind of proper goal scoring form. But he does he does score big goals. But that's the whole advantage of a big squad. So Carlos command scored the hat trick the other day. We know Ruth can score goals. There's, they've got that talent. They've got that talent in the the competition for places, but. What would be your best Rangers front three if you are Steven Gerrard and you were going to, going to sell it away? What would be your what would be a front three you would go for? Because I've I've just got it written down here. I would always go with Ken. I would play Roof and I would play Morelos. That would be my starting front three for a massive game. But it shows you games against Ross County. I'm not no disrespect to them in Dundee, but they're the games where you do kind of try other things. You do try a different front three and just see if it works. I I mean I think Ken and Morales are stuck on. Um, I, I, I definitely do um, for for the, the goals from Morales and obviously what Kent creates. The other one um, I do like Ruth. I think he's a good player, um, but I think he wants to play that central role. I yeah. think he's he's a nine kind of in there. So therefore, would you go with two wider players? I don't think Sakal is a starter. I think he possibly may be in maybe years to come. He's obviously done he's got great pace, done really well um, recently. But yeah, it would be hard to disagree with, with with those three. As I say, my only worry would be one of the wide areas. Are you playing Roof there? Are you playing Morelos there? Are you playing Mar- Morales as a 10, whatever? You know, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, it'd be hard to disagree with that with that front three, to be honest. And obviously, we saw during the week a couple of things about Rangers play with a front two. They don't play, it's not a front two. They play no, with, no. It's, a, it's a front three. It's, it's, a, quite, it's, it's, it's quite cavalier as well because the midfield three become a bit narrow. Which always allows Bassey or Barisic and Taverni um, to, to get forward as well. It's a, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice style of play to watch when it's done at a tempo. Um, but again, maybe as, as Gerard identified that they're maybe struggling conceding goals, so Jack's maybe going to provide that cover a wee bit mm-hmm. better um, than possibly Davis. Now, Davis is not going to play every game because he's age. Um, but, you know, if someone says to me, you're going to play Steve Davis or Ryan Jack in a game, it, it would be Steve Davis for me. Um, every day of the week, to be uh, honest. It just depends on the situation as well. I mean, Davis... Of course it does. Aye, Davis, R- 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 I'd imagine Ryan Jack would start the old firm game. Yeah, I would say, I would say because, that's... Because I, 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 I want to go there and not lose as such. Aye, I, that's um, probably your day for Davis. Get start stuffing up your midfield, make it aye. a wee bit more, more concrete than that. So, yeah, yeah I, definitely. I, think, I think that's possibly the way they'll go. But in a kind of longer term, Ryan Jack will start. But just now, I just think Davis and Kamara would be the two. Yeah, and it's going, it's going to take a bit of time for Jack to get fully. Oh, of course, I yeah. So yeah. I, but again, Rangers are. You see, they're only two points worse off than last season, but their goals, their goals lost is a lot bigger than it was last season. I think it's like eight goals more. I'm not saying I still think Rangers have enough to pay making a top of the league and things like that. But that's it's got to be that they've got to iron that out quickly if they want to kind of just settle things down because you don't want to give you can't give team goals. A team ahead start. No, not not at all, not at all. But as I say, it's sometimes you know it's easy to worry about the back because you're always going to score goals, and it's, it's exactly the same as Celtic. Gerard, I think would be more worried if Kent Morales etc. weren't they scoring goals. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the, and the back was so in most games were low score nil nils etc. <clears throat> Again, is he maybe going down the cell? We're, we're going to we've got better players, so we're going to score more in the opposition. You know, I, I think sometimes. This Rangers team, and I didn't say, I didn't think they were particularly bad on Thursday night, but when they're bad, they're rotten. They're, oh, they're some really, some really it, poor. Man. Again, you would struggle to take. But when when they click, they're exceptional. You know, they're, they're, they're really, really good. They're really good going forward. Again, it's a wee bit of confidence in the centre-halves, and they play at a tempo. 
you know, like they did for spells on Saturday. Um, but I think, I mean, again, I only watched the first half, but they were rotten. You know, they were absolutely rotten. Right. <laughs> um, but again, coming with a draw, and that's what it's all about. And I'm quite right. sure, you know, win ugly. Well, win, win when you're playing poor. That, that Stephen Gerrard will be delighted. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's obviously the Celtic Rangers are both one. Hearts are late. Hearts are third. Motherwell a big win as well. St. Johnson, St. Marin, 0-0. No, no, and obviously Hibs and Livingston, are, their game will be rearranged. But we'll move into the games in the other leagues in the SPFL. The Championship, what's, what was your takeaways for that? Oh, it, was, it was a black eye on Saturday for Kelly. Um, lost an early goal and then didn't really look like it uh, doing anything in the game. Again, they won three in the bounce in a week. Um, previous, so I think the punters were uh, laying off them slightly. But again, I think that's going to happen in that league. I think everyone's capable of beating everybody else. And it's like a broken record. Inverness hit the ground running. A couple of sticky results that from the, for their point of view. Um, I don't think Air have ever beaten me this conversation. So I don't think Air have ever beaten Inverness. Um, we can have that discussion on Saturday. So it was a good point for Air um, and good for Kilmarnock. Stay top of the league, as I say. I think the surprising result, you know, I, I expect a reaction at Dunfermline um, from losing the manager. Um, but again, I think there are big problems there. Uh, big problems there. That, that's, um, and as I say, Morton are kind of hot and cold as well, usually more cold than hot. Yeah. Um, that's a great result for, for them away from home. And as I say, Queen of the South Ray draw. As I say, I think there'll be plenty more draws in that league um, over the next, well, between now and Christmas anyway. Um, but I do think a gap will start to appear. I know. I thought I did think Kilmarnock that they kind of looked as if they were beginning to hit a wee run, and obviously a wee sticky patch on Saturday. It just opens out a wee bit. Partick Thistle have been a bit, have been very, very good the past few yeah. weeks. Obviously, and I, th- I think Ian McCall's very good. No, I mean, what, was it, long... what happened? What was it? What happened with Ian McCall at half time? What was... I, I couldn't tell you. Obviously, we were away in Berry. I couldn't tell you. Was there an incident or something? With I it? was something about the game was delayed, and there was some Ian McCall in the referee. But if anybody does know, then please let us know because I've. I've heard kind of oh, I, 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 I know the referees well. I, I, I never even knew anything about it. The, th- the thing, I mean, as I, as I say, the kids were there. And what excited my kids was Kelly's potential new signing was at the game for January. John McGinn. Um, Aye, so he, he 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 was he was there. So uh, that that be a good addition to our midfield as well. Mm-hmm. Take the place of his his brother. But no, I didn't, I didn't hear it. I, I did notice that the game. Well, as I say, we were Aye, down there. It was delayed about fifteen minutes or something. Aye. I didn't hear him, but I do. I do like Ian McCall. I mean, a long, long time ago, I was on coaching badges. And Ian McCall, he was very good, very direct, you know. And and I'm I'm pleased to see him doing well, even though it's at Partick. I'm I'm pleased I'm pleased to see him doing well. He's a good guy. Yeah, he is that. But obviously, the I'm keen to get your thoughts on this because obviously we this week debate from uh, Coman that we're looking for a manager. The family are are four points behind, and I do expect them to improve. Let's I do expect them to get better and results to pick up because that's a that is a very the top spike. Kind of close together, but the bottom's quite close together as well. You've got five teams within like three points each other. If you're the Fairman, do you go for a kind of guy who can just get you out of relegation, or do you build with a young manager like so I'd love to see? Like we spoke about this last week. I'd love to see like so Darren Young, Kevin Rukovic get a chance at that kind of job. What would you do? Would you go with the the kind of tried and tested guy just to kind of keep you up, or do you go for the new kind of guy? Do you go for a, an up and comer who could potentially make his break? Oh, well, there's, there's always two ways to look at it. I mean, Kelly went with the tried and tested and still get relegated. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, yeah. again, there was the kind of damage done by the previous manager. And but, but if only to remember, Tommy Wright lost his first five games. Mm-hmm. You know, when he came when he came in as well, and he had he had plenty of games to, you know, you know, to get us out of trouble. But I think the kind of raw had set in with the players, etc. I think, I mean, I know managers are desperate for jobs. The guys that are out of the game, but you know, I sometimes think. Can managers afford, or can their family afford to get a bigger name in? You know, that's no disrespect to Darren Young or uh, the other fellow you mentioned, Rukovic. Um, I think somebody like, maybe to get the fans back on side, somebody like Stuart Petrie, mm-hmm. you know, their family player previous, somebody like him. Or as you say, did they, did they prop for someone that's maybe done better lower down, you know? Um, look at the job. Kevin Thompson at Kelty Hearts, mm-hmm. you know, is, is 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 that a type of job that would interest Kevin Thompson? Um, you know, Kenny Miller's name's been branded about, but is it too much? I mean, I think I mean Greg Shields, I think, is in there just now. Yeah. I um, mean, he I, I know he's done his apprenticeship. He was out coaching and whatnot in America. He's done his SFA badges, etc. 
you know, and played for them firmly as well. Would he be one to be looking? You know, the fans maybe see that as a bit biscuit tin, possibly because he's already there. But I mean, for the family, Peter Grant the experiment doesn't work. I mean, I was amazed Peter Grant get that job because I mean, I'll, I'll get relegated. I'm, I don't doubt he's not a very good coach. I, I don't doubt that. But Manson's completely different, you know, and he, he's obviously came with a reputation and a name. He's worked with some of the biggest clubs in England as, as well. Um, but as I say, I don't think that experiment works. So I think they possibly may go around the route of, of tried and tested. Um, again, could they go and pinch Jim Duffy from there? I'd imagine the family could possibly offer a bigger salary than, than that because he's, he's done really well this, uh, since he came in here. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see to, to see to see who they find whether they, they gamble for you know a Kenny Muller or you know that or do they go down in the lower leagues and pick someone that's been relatively successful yeah but uh, we'll move into League One quickly obviously Airdrie were the only, the only team to pick up a win I think it was four draws there so Airdrie are now top of the, the table yep. that league is that league is going to be tight oh absolutely tight as I say two wins in your top two losses in your bottom um, as tight Airdrie going well though Mm-hmm. I think I'd maybe predicted Falkirk to win it but they're certainly, they're certainly not out of it I think there's only maybe six points between the top six teams or something yeah. um, I don't think Al were out of it um, either so I, it's, 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 it's a tight league and again um, is, is that something you know the are looking at who's doing well might are doing well in that league maybe take a bump up to the championship and keep them up Aye, but uh, League Two as well. Kelty obviously extending the the league. league yeah, they're, they're running. That, that 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 was a good win for them, and then yeah. we still have been losing as well mm-hmm. to Stanley. So that uh, uh, was good for them. Yeah, definitely. But it's uh, it's been a another exciting weekend in Scottish football. But we'll touch on what's what's coming up. There's a couple of wee questions I want to ask you. The the big talk on Sunday in the our chat was obviously the the wee rumor about Stephen Gerrard. Yeah, I'm keen to get your thoughts. Not maybe not this job, right? But surely at some point this is going to come up. Stephen Gerrard is a big, big name. Oh, ab- absolutely, ab- absolutely. Now, again, I know I was being quite flapping on the chat, right? Now, the way I look at it, and, and, and I'll say this again: if you're Newcastle United now and you have unlimited funds. Right now, I know there has to be a stepping stone. They can't go from um, Steve Bruce to a Conte or a Brendan Rogers or whoever, like a top top manager, Pep, whoever. Try to go for Emery, didn't they? Well, again, is he a top top manager? Probably not. Or is he, but or is he that just we stage kind of below no. again? For so there needs to be that kind of transition. Now, again, in my opinion, this is only my humble opinion. I think Newcastle at the moment need a Jose Mourinho. Get in, get set, get the points required to keep you up, start again. And then next year, target possibly top 10, top 12. And it has to be a process. They can't go from Steve Bruce to Pep Guardiola. No. However, and my point on Gerard is, if you had unlimited funds, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, Steven Gerrard's top 10 in a row. You can't take that away from him. Yeah. He's obviously bought wisely in the transfer market, right? But managers are based on trophies. What do they want? That The Newcastle fans want a trophy. They want a League Cup, an FA Cup. They want something in the next couple of seasons. Is Stephen Jarrett going to love on that? Now, no, quite, but is, is he going to deliver that Aston Valley either? It seems to be the well, that's, that, 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 that's, that's what I'm moving on to. I, I don't think necessarily... Aston Villa have been starved of success the way Newcastle fans have. No, no. I, so don't, think there's as much, I don't think there's as much kind of desperation at Villa as there is at Newcastle. Yeah, absolutely. Aye. Absolutely. Now, what I said on Saturday, which upset a couple of folk on the, the Stuart and Wenger bus, was, <laughs> in my opinion, in my opinion, Eddie Howe is a championship manager taking that club to the championship. <coughs> that, for me, I would have taken Steven Gerrard as a gamble before the gamble of, of, of Eddie Howe. I just see Eddie Howe as a stopgap there. I don't see, I well, don't I, see I think, Eddie Howe I, I, being the guy I who's going to uh, yeah, drive success. I think at these stepping stones, yeah. Eddie Howe is a stopgap. But Eddie Howe is going to need an awful long time to transition the way he wants to play football. And again, I'd be looking at Newcastle, and I know money's now probably irrelevant, but the money Eddie Howe spent at Bournemouth was embarrassing on some of those players. And that's a gamble in the transfer market. 
And to go from Steve Bruce's style of football to Eddie Howe's is going to take a long, long time with those players. But that's, and I that's, that's a point that, I would So like. that's where I think, I, I don't think Eddie Howe's the right fit. But again, I think with Gerrard's, the kind of media of stopping 10 in a row is going to get linked with these jobs. And I agree with Jamie Carragher, who he said yesterday, I do think Gerrard needs another stepping stone before he gets that job that he's, he's, he's always wanted at Liverpool. Now, in my opinion, Rangers are bigger than Aston Villa. They are bigger yes. than Newcastle. And see, to be honest with you, again, probably a bigger club than Liverpool. Worldwide, Rangers are a bigger club than Liverpool, in my opinion. And if folk will argue that, oh, Liverpool have won X amount of trophies. Yeah, OK, but around the world, I would imagine Rangers are probably a bigger support in the club um, than Liverpool. But, however, the chance of his boyhood team. But I think the, the club will be there for a wee while yet. But I do think Gerard needs another stepping stone. I think he needs to get an Aston Villa, Leeds, that kind of kind of middle of the road, pushing Europa League. Um, I know he probably wouldn't take the Everton job, but somewhere in those, I think he needs to go there and do a wee bit before, obviously. I mean, if he meant he'll get a Liverpool job. I mean, you know, Liverpool could quite easily when Klopp goes go and get Pep Guardiola or Brendan Rodgers or, you know, a proper elite manager. Um, so as uh, he's going to get linked with every job. Every time a manager gets sacked, he's going to, he's going to get linked with the jobs. Yeah. Again, I do wonder and always think sometimes, you know, no smoke without fire. Is he, is he getting his agent to tout himself now? Has he does he think he can't really take reins? He's he's been brought in and done what he's exactly what he was asked to do. I'm quite sure, and he's got every chance in the in the Premier Sports Trophy to win a trophy. I do think he will retain the league title um, this season. But is he now looking to move on? I've done, I've came here. He's, and let's let's before we just think he's been here one year, stop in the row. He's here before that. He's been here for three full seasons now. But you've got to be like that if you're Steven Gerrard. You've got to it's be in the, ah, you've got to be thinking. He's like, got to have ambition to, ah, to ambition. go. You've because, got to have ambition to move to the next level because unless unless he wins possibly back to back trebles. Another great run in Europa League, do, does well in the Champions League, then he could possibly go from Rangers to Liverpool. But I, I think I think there's a stop. I think he's got to go Rangers via if he wants that Liverpool job. I, and I think be, it has to be in the Premier League. I wouldn't be overly surprised if in the next week while if this Aston Villa thing is serious, which it seem, it seems to be on a short list. That's all I've, I've heard. I wouldn't be overly surprised if he took that job. And no, I don't no, think he would. I don't I, think he would leave with any bad will from the Rangers no, fans. No, I, I, I don't think so. In terms of what he's done, but you do get that wee feeling, and I'm not. I'm not saying I think this. I know that there, there are people who think this. Has he done enough at this moment to say right? He's he's going to walk into Anfield in the next two years if Klopp decides to leave. I think he does need a couple of trophies just to kind of get that rod off his back for people to that for people that say. He's only won one trophy out of 12. I know that's something that's come up here. Fair enough, but it does. I think he does need that. I think he does need to build on the success of our last season. To yeah. Further his, then, further his, further his could, name in the shop window. You could, you could argue that if he stays at Rangers for another, let's just say two seasons, right? And he maybe wins three, four trophies. He stocks higher mm-hmm. then to go from Rangers to Liverpool then if he goes to Aston Villa and gets him in the Europa League, because that's, he could that, also, that, that's... He could also he could also fail at these type of clubs because there's a well that's that's but that's again that's that's the same as the transfer talk we had earlier. Aye. Everything's a gamble. Aye. Everything's a gamble because they're they're not jobs that are. I mean, Aston Villa are in a tough tough position. I think they've lost the last five games. Mm-hmm. Gerard was to go there and it didn't work. It didn't work out early doors. I'm not saying. That there would be that sort of, but the pressure can mount very easily in that. Yeah, but that's a gamble you take. I mean, it was. I mean, what would what would Rangers fans think of Steven Gerrard if Celtic had got ten in a row and he won the league this year? I think they would have been seriously looking for a new manager in the summer. There you go. So everything's I, a gamble. Yeah. But Ger- Gerrard's task when he was offered that job was stop ten yeah. in a row. Yeah, that's least- that's the bottom line, and he's done it. Yeah, he's done so, that. So, again, achieved the success. And that'll buy, that buys him goodwill. That buys you Exactly. The what I'm saying to you is if, if Gerard hadn't done that, okay, 
Would he, and he's done a good a good job. I think he's done a great job. He's done a good job. Would he be touted for Newcastle or Aston Villa? Absolutely not. Because he'd be seen as the Steven Gerrard that failed to stop 10 in a row. But this is what I was going to get as well, just before we touch on Scotland. That, well, we're going to get into a wee bit of a tangent, but when Solskjaer got the Man United job, he wasn't linked with any other job in the Premier League. No, it's just that, 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 that was goodwill. That, Aye, that, that was Steve, goodwill. Steven Gerrard, for me, has earned these stripes. Yes, that's To be linked with these jobs. Aye. But what I'm saying is, as a chairman, right, and, and, and chairman really aren't footballing people as such, you know, they're, they're, they're rich people. And you look at it, and a chairman will look at, right, well, Steven Gerrard's won two league titles. They'll not they'll no remember the previous part, right? So he, he stopped 10 in a row. He's won the League Cup and the league. Mm, that's interesting. Let's go for Steven Gerrard. Aye, but that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. If Steven Gerrard time. managed Leeds for five or six years and kept them top 10, for example, he wouldn't be like Grass and Villa. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's based on success and trophies for these chairmen. Yeah. And I know it's a, a different league and possibly an, an easier league to win, but going back to the original point, I, I didn't think he was. I don't think he was a fit for the Newcastle gig, um, but what I do think is Steven Gerrard needs another stepping stone before he gets that coveted Liverpool job that I think he, he so dearly wants. Yeah, my point with Solskjaer thing was like, oh. I don't think I don't think Gerrard. If Gerrard was to go to Liverpool in the next eighteen months or so, I don't think it's because he was a Liverpool legend and he's probably the best option. He's, Probably going there because they think he's a good manager. Yeah, and his reputation, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and he'll have one trophies. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you could look at Solskjaer and say, was he a good manager before he went into Man United? No. Now, why is, why is, I mean, you may have, I've not read the paper this morning. Has Gerard been linked with Norwich? No, nah, I don't think so. I think that's, I think I've heard more Lampard's link with that. But <laughs> well, so, I, don't so think, why? I don't think he would take, why? I don't think he would take Norwich. I could see him no, being no, taken no, I don't think he would either, but why, why, is, why is he not linked with it? Interesting. I don't you know. You know, and, and that, because Lampard was linked with Newcastle and Norwich, but his name's not been mentioned for Aston Villa. I don't think Lampard would, would take Norwich either. I think that is a, a very. No, it's Big Sam. Game. That's a Big Sam job. I think he's done there. Aye, I think that's sort of that job. I, I would be surprised if Lampard. I, I just don't get how they're linked to one and, and, and not, the, not the other. You know, as, as I say, Aye. and even, even the Spurs job, I think I heard Gerard's name mentioned as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they go and they they they've got the resources to go and get Conte, you know. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. it's bizarre. Yeah, but well, that's it. It's probably a subject we'll touch on at a later date, and it's something that we'll, we'll keep an eye on. But I'll probably be breaking news once we go off air that like he's signed for Aston Villa. Uh, <laughs> potentially, then we could maybe have a, a live show. Absolutely. <laughs> but we'll touch in Scotland quickly. Obviously, we've got a a big international break coming up. Moldova away, Denmark at home. Win one of those games, and you're in the playoffs. Surely they do it. Surely. Yes, they do. I, I absolutely. Uh, they'll go to Moldova and win. Um, yeah. And I think, unfortunately, I think the game against Denmark could turn out to be a wee bit drab. I think the the adrenaline will get them through the Moldova game. The job done as such. Aye, going well. And I think Moldova. the Moldova. I think the Denmark game. Sorry, I think they've obviously qualified won the group. Yeah, they may play out, and they'll be good players. Don't get me wrong. They'll play a couple of guys that maybe don't play as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Obviously, with uh, Scotland, they might give you know guys a game that might be in the squad a few times that haven't. So I've got my tickets. I'll be there. Um, as I say, I'm a wee bit worried about a damp squib. Mm-hmm. You know, one half of you thinks, oh, are we drawing Moldova and then beat Denmark at Hamden in a full house, etc. But no, let's just get the job done on nice. Friday night. Uh, game over, and then you know, cap, cap anybody. Uh, come next week, give the guys like Kenny McLean, it's always there, Kevin Niz, but just give them a game, let them John McLaughlin, just give these guys um, a game and uh, save the rest of the guys for the, for the playoff. Yeah, definitely, but we're going to obviously be, be on track with the international break over the week Friday, I think it's a game, I think it's Friday at five o'clock, we'll obviously cover the game in our, our show next week, but we are going to wrap up the show there. That is us for this week's episode. I want to thank Wilson for joining us as always. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm a di- disappointed that uh, my two biggest fans, Shankers and Rory, haven't sent me any fans' questions. Because nah, I, uh, I know they're big, they're big fans of mine, but that's, we'll, we'll get some next week, hopefully. Nah, definitely. But thanks best. for having me on, Scott. Appreciate pleasure that. as always. Thank you very much to everyone that's tuned in. Please subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel and follow us on social media. We'll be back soon. Thanks very much. Thanks very much.